Dune Prophecy gives us a glimpse into the ancient days of House Carino's empire and the early shape of the Bene Gesserit Order, an organization whose actions greatly alter the course of events throughout the Dune saga. The show further fills characters mentioned in both Frank Herbert's works and those of his son Brian and author Kevin Anderson, while also adding new people and motives not seen before. One of the greatest mysteries in the first episode that I think will play a significant role in seasons to come and tie into the distant future of Paul Atreides and beyond centers around the vision beheld by Reverend Mother Raquela Berto Anarul on her deathbed. She warns of the coming of Tyran Arafel. Then she witnesses a sandworm engulf the Sisterhood school, a conflagration of fire and blood, other symbols of the Empire, and at the end, a set of glowing blue eyes accompanied by mechanical sounds. There are many details and theories to discuss from this Bene Gesserit vision, but first, what exactly is Arafel? Arafel is a term charged with religion and a deep sense of foreboding. It's an old Hebrew word that loosely translates to a thick darkness a heavy gloom or fog, and is used several times in connection to God's presence. It's a reference to the unknowable house of God, the apocalypse in which all mankind will be judged. In Frank Herbert's Dune saga, Arafel is the doom foretold by God Emperor Leto II and the existential struggle for which he prepared humanity in accordance with his golden path. Not only was the God Emperor extremely long-lived, but also far-sighted, and as the most powerful prescient individual, could peer into the future's furthest depths. In almost all of them, the human race died, driven to extinction by myriad cataclysms, decisions, and acts of hubris. Leto perceived a narrow vision of humanity's survival, what he called the Golden Path, and spent his effort ruling the Empire as a tyrant to safely guide it along this path. Arafel is connected to another religious term of the ancient Zen Sunni Buddh Islamic faith, Kralazak. Also known as the Typhoon Struggle, it's a term that signifies Armageddon and is kept in the mythos of the Fremen culture. This too Leto foresaw, and in truth, it was his actions that would bring about Kralazak, but it was a necessity for his golden path's success. The Typhoon Struggle is the tumultuous period immediately following Leto's death. The God Emperor of Dune, ruled as tyrant for 3,500 years. His reign was a crushing pressure that gave order but also greatly restricted mankind. In his absence, Leto's empire crumbled, chaos and lawlessness reigned, and yet a renewed sense of discovery. The famine times and subsequent scattering of humanity across the universe is Kralazek, a period of instability, starvation, and death that once overcome, diversifies the human race and inoculates it from ever again being completely subject to a central authority. But Kralazek isn't Arafel, and though the Typhoon struggle was a significant obstacle, it wasn't the greatest threat to Leto's golden path. In the Dune universe, humanity has had a long and dreadful history with artificial intelligence. In ages past, machines took over thinking for mankind and then dominated the human race. The epic struggle against thinking machines culminated in the Butlerian Jihad, which purged artifice from the Empire, and once finished, imprinted within humankind's collective psyche a fear of thinking machines, the scars of which lingered for millennia. During the time of Paul Atreides, humanity once more grew lax, and the proscriptions of the Butlerian Jihad were circumvented by many worlds, such as Advanced House Richese and the Machine Fabricators of Ix. When Leto II came to power, he realized artificial intelligence would once more rear its head and threaten humanity's existence. This is his vision of Arafel, the advent of self-replicating and self-improving artificial technologies guided by prescience to seek out and exterminate the human race. To Leto, it was a question of when, not if, and his actions as God Emperor of Dune didn't stop Arafel but delayed its coming long enough for his golden path to bear fruit. Leto's plan involved assuming control of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood's meticulous breeding program and using it to create the no gene within human DNA. The gene would make its carrier invisible to prescience, and this, combined with the scattering, would save humanity through probability. Unable to be traced and dispersed across the universe, much of the race could perish, but it would never fully go extinct. Survival against Arafel is the God Emperor's greatest gift. 
The no gene first manifests in Siona Atreides, a product of Leto's breeding program, and he shares with her his apocalyptic vision of Arafel. A passage from God Emperor of Dune follows. She jerked abruptly and began to tremble like a small creature dying. He knew this experience, but couldn't change the smallest part of it. No ancestral presences would remain in her consciousness, but she would carry with her forever afterwards the clear sights and sounds and smells. The seeking machines would be there, the smell of blood and entrails, the cowering humans in their burrows, aware only that they could not escape. While all the time the mechanical movement approached, nearer and nearer and nearer, louder, louder, Everywhere she searched, it would be the same. No escape anywhere. This is the doom of Arafel, the threat to the Golden Path and what Leto seeks to avoid through Siona's no-gene. The prescient seeking machines are manufactured by the hubris of Ix. Progress can't be curtailed forever, and as the Ixians continue to manufacture technology that pushes the boundary of the Butlerian proscriptions, they inadvertently give rise to weapons they can't control. But a glimmer of hope is given by the god emperor before his passing. In Leto's final moments, he tells Siona this. Do not fear the Ixians, he said, and he heard his own voice as a fading whisper. They can make the machines, but they no longer can make Arafel. I know. I was there. This illustrates that the final hurdle in the Golden Path has been overcome. With Siona's no-gene passed down through generations, humanity will survive its existential struggle, regardless of the Ixian-seeking machines. There's no reason to fear them, at least for the human race, because Arafel can no longer be achieved. So this explanation and look at Arafel brings us to Dune prophecy and the Bene Gesserit vision first experienced by Raquela Berto Anarul. Many in the Dune universe experience a limited form of prescience or future sight, but only few truly see. For most, it's a byproduct of spice consumption that opens the mind to brief images and patterns, usually only noticed in the subconscious. This could be the source of Mother Superior Raquela's vision, but it's brief, scattered, and leaves questions that can't be answered. Her experience ties into the Dune saga and events far into the future when she mentions Arafel. She believes her vision to be of the end of days, but whether she perceives it to be the death of the sisterhood or all of humanity isn't certain. And though Raquela connects her vision to the God Emperor's prophesied judgment day, it's a little different. She mentions to Valia Harkonnen and her granddaughter Dorothea, Tiran Arafel. After Raquela passes, Valia discusses Tehran Arafel with other sisters, who mention that it's a holy reckoning brought on by a tyrant. It's this language in particular that clues us into the true meaning of Raquela's vision. Of course, what follows are just theories, and we can't be certain until the series reveals more. It could be that the Arafel Mother Superior witnessed wasn't the same as that perceived by Leto. Again, he's the most powerful prescient known in Dune's mythos and can see further than others. Instead, the holy reckoning Raquela feared could be a vision of the god emperor himself. During and after his reign, the Bene Gesserit referred to him as the tyrant with disdain. He commandeered their genetic breeding program. He hoarded spice to limit ascension of reverend mothers. He squeezed and denied the sisterhood in many of their efforts, taking them to the brink of extinction. In this light, he was the doom of the order. Herbert took great inspiration for his series from the Near East and Arabic culture, and though Tehran doesn't have a direct translation from Arabic to English, it is a Dutch word that means tyrant or oppressor, further strengthening Leto's connection to this vision. The sandworm that swallows the sisterhood's school could also be a symbol of Leto himself. We know the god emperor to have metamorphosed into an Arakeen worm during his millennia-long rule, so the worm engulfing the sisterhood illustrates Leto's future grip on the Bene Gesserit. Finally, at the end, Raquela sees two piercing blue eyes staring back at her from beyond space and time. It could be that these are artificial eyes meant to illustrate destruction at the hands of thinking machines, but another possibility is that these are the characteristic Blue within blue eyes of Ibad, possessed by the Fremen of Arrakis, including God Emperor Leto II. 
and his father, Paul Muad'Dib. This visualization reminds me of a moment near the end of Dune where Paul, as the Kwisatz Haderach, confronts Mother Superior Gaius Helene Mohaim. Try your tricks on me, old witch. Where's your Gom Jabbar? Try looking into that place where you dare not look. You'll find me there, staring out at you. The Bene Gesserit, with access to other memories and the lives of their genetic past, can see only the female side of their ancestry. The male side is shrouded in darkness and fear. To peer into it leads to madness. The full nature of Rakella's vision could have been blocked by this abyss, with the terrible eyes of Muad'Dib or the tyrant staring back into the past. Another possible tyrant, or at least agent of Arafel, exists in mysterious Desmond Hart, sole survivor of a raid and subsequent sandworm attack on Arrakis. Though it's still very early in Dune Prophecy's running, Hart seems to have a strong connection to the sandworm, and its symbolism in Rakella's vision could point us to him. Desmond also demonstrates what seems to be a superhuman ability to burn victims without fire and without touch. The scorched skin of both Pruitt Richese and the Bene Gesserit sister Kasha look just like that found in Mother Superior's dream. And from Desmond himself, we know he harbors ill intent for the sisterhood and will be working against them in episodes to come. It could be that he's an agent of shadow factions across the Empire, specifically the Bene Tleilax or the Ixians, or perhaps he's a member of another ancient school. Frank Herbert's works made passing reference that several schools existed in the ancient days of the Carino Empire, but that only the Spacing Guild and Bene Gesserit remained by the time of Paul Atreides. It could be that Desmond and his benefactors will seek to bring Tehran Arafel, and if not destroy humanity, at least level the young sisterhood. Regardless of what appears in Berto Anarul's prophecy, the contents are hopelessly convoluted, which leaves her, Valya Harkonnen, and by extension the whole Bene Gesserit, vulnerable to misinterpretation. This is the real danger of the vision, whose false conclusions will likely drive the sisterhood to pursue avenues beyond what their order might have originally intended. Again, we're just dealing with theories and speculation, but I think the fear stoked by Raquel's portent will see the Bene Gesserit embrace a more prohibitive outlook on machine technology. Though the memory of the Butlerian Jihad is fresh in mankind's psyche, there are still those who use banned artifice. The Sisterhood, fearing Arafel brought by a machine tyrant, might guide emperors and leaders of the Landsrad to aggressively excise AI, which will perpetuate well into the distant future, as the Butlerian proscriptions still hold at the time of Paul Atreides. This fear too, I think will act as the foundation for the Bene Gesserit to pursue their most ambitious project, the culmination of the Kwisatz Haderach. Fearing Tehran Arafel, they'll rush against time to place a tyrant of their own making on the throne, completely beholden to the sisterhood and charged with enough power to resist outside threats. The Bene Gesserit already have meticulous genetic archives in the time of Dune prophecy, but they've not yet mentioned their Kwisatz Haderach project. Anarul's fractured vision might act as its impetus. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video on Tehran Arafel in Frank Herbert's Dune. Let me know your thoughts on Raquel's vision, the God Emperor Leto's design, and Desmond Hart's intentions, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I want to take a moment to thank all of my supporters over on Patreon, who make all of this possible. I couldn't do it without their fantastic support. If you'd like to become a lore luminary for access to me, a great community, written scripts, and early video drops, head to patreon.com slash the to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.